Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to the latest video and the story of this video newsletter. Well, we're going to talk about a um, bit of a follow on from some other videos I've made about great standard operating procedures, great auditing techniques and things like that. We're going to talk about a control plan. So we're going to talk about what is a control plan. We're going to talk about what a control plan definitely isn't. Now like a lot of these videos, the heart of what I'm going to talk about is the process thinking diagram you have a process what's it there to do it is there to make money all your machinery looks like this they are all just money making machines what do you have well on one side of this you have inputs the speed the feed the material specification etc so speed, feed, temperature, maintenance frequency, um, material, material spec, I don't know, tip condition, if it's a CNC lathe. So you've got inputs, And on this side, of course, you've got the things that the customer is interested in. You've got outputs, all right? Now, the outputs typically are things like their tolerances, you know? Dimension A, dimension B, I don't know hardness what else might be in there surface finish might be in there okay so this this is the heart of everything I talk about if you've got this diagram in your head if you get your money-making process in your head or you get your money-making process on a piece of paper everything makes sense now, of course, what should you have done when you implemented this money-making process? Well, what you should have done, you should have done an FMEA. That's what you should have done. And what comes out of the FMEA is a control plan. Now typically, if you didn't do the FMEA or you didn't do the FMEA properly because you just think it's filling in a piece of paper after the, after the fact, typically what you've done, you implement chaos and eventually you do some kind of continuous improvement project. And what does the improvement project do? Well, it has to tidy up the mess that you created because you didn't do this properly. What should come out of the continuous improvement project? A control plan, either way, if you do it beforehand, it's a lot cheaper, but if you do it after the fact, either way, a control plan has got to come out of your activities. Otherwise, your problems just keep coming back again and again and again. So let's talk about what a control plan is, and what a control plan isn't. So the first thing it isn't is this. If your plan is to measure these, 
So you're just going to put inspection in place. And then of course, what does inspection lead to? It leads to you grading them as good and bad. Now that is a flipping disaster. That is an inspection plan. That is not a control plan. What control is, is making sure that your process always makes good product. I don't need to do this. If I've got a great control plan, I don't actually need to measure any outputs. What should I be doing? A control plan fixes inputs. And I really do mean fix them. So your settings on your machine, speed, feed, temperature, they're easy to fix. They're just dials. You just agree a setting, you set them, literally you take your hands off, you drink tea, you read the paper. Or better still, take a hammer and smack the dials off the front of the machine once you've put them in so that the operator cannot mess with them. Fix the inputs. Now the more difficult variables are your maintenance. This is where this is where the cock-up starts. You have maintenance procedures, but when you're pushed into a corner, do I make the urgent order or do I do the maintenance procedure? You typically avoid the maintenance procedure and you start to make your machine have some variability. What happens? Your technicians try to adjust these to buy the problem off and now what we've got is somebody twiddling dials like you wouldn't believe because this is bouncing around all over the place. But what should you do? You have a rule, you have a, uh, a standard and you maintain it. And if you always maintain your maintenance frequencies, you always make sure that the incoming material specification is right. Don't write concessions for this crap. If it's wrong, it goes in the bin and you get the right stuff. And if you make sure that the tip condition on the machine is always as it should be, you change it every five cycles or every 10 cycles or whatever it is. These maintenance type things are where it goes wrong. Tip condition, you violate that rule. Maintenance activities, you tend to push them out when you come under pressure. The minute you start to violate these two maintenance type variables, the other variables will have to move. And what do you lose? You lose control. And now you have to inspect the crap out of everything because you never know whether you're gonna make anything good or bad or not. That is not a control plan. That's an inspection plan. Control comes on the inputs to the process. You fix them maintain them, you put great controls in, and then what fixes them, by the way, the auditing procedure. Once you've agreed, once you've agreed what the rules are, what do you do? You audit the crap out of them. ISO, layered, 5S, NAD cap, and if you find that someone is violating the input controls, you shoot them because that is violating the control plan. But that's control. Control is setting standards this end and then auditing those standards so that they never ever move. And if they never ever move, you always hit the dimensions, the hardness and the surface finish you never need to inspect anything because you're confident you always make good product. That's a control plan. Don't set up inspection plans. Inspection plans are a sign you haven't got a clue what you're doing and therefore you have to measure it and grade it. Now don't get me wrong, initially until you get confidence in this you're gonna have to do some of this but what should be in your control plan mostly this stuff with a little bit of this. Don't, don't think this is your control plan. This is an inspection plan. Control the inputs, audit the inputs. 
you just make more money and that's why this is the centerpiece of everything you do you can see look this is the centerpiece of FMEA this is the centerpiece of your ISO this is the centerpiece of your control plan it's just the centerpiece of everything that you do it's the centerpiece of 5S look why, why did I do 5S it's to control the money making process the only reason I do it isn't to clean up it's not a cleaning up exercise it's a control system 5S get this into the heart of your business understand your money making process understand the inputs understand the outputs fix the inputs light touch on measuring the outputs and you'll just make bucket loads of cash and your process will do whatever you want it to do every single day